an introduction to a transceiver I've called the Poxy. Just two active devices, but it can transmit a few hundred milliwatts of CW on 7 megahertz. It's basically a combination of what I've described in two previous videos. A very simple one transistor 7 megahertz CW transmitter, similar to the one that I built on a chopping board. And for the receiver part, one that I described just recently, a one transistor reflex receiver. Just two active devices, but yes, you can make contacts, although it does take a bit of effort because of its crystal control, low power and broad receiver. Everything is bare bones. A switch goes from transmit to receive and a variable capacitor gives you a little bit of frequency agility, maybe a kilohertz or a bit over. Here's the circuit. I'll zoom in so you can get a closer look. This is the transmitter portion. It's crystal controlled with crystal frequency of 7023 kilohertz, commonly available from eBay. I've got two crystals in parallel, though you don't have to. The effect of that is to increase the frequency pulling range. And the variable capacitor in series Strictly speaking, that is also optional, but you do want to shift the frequency a little bit when you go from transmit to receive. If you don't have a variable capacitor, then you could put in a fixed capacitor of say 220 picofarad, and to shift the frequency, you might do something like have another capacitor of say, I don't know, maybe 22 picofarad or 33 or 47, something that's significantly different from the 220 and that will offset the frequency and you could just put a switch in it so you can switch one or the other. Anyway, I've used a variable capacitor so you can get continuous adjustment over about a kilohertz or a bit more. The transistor is the BD139, commonly available transistor that is good for RF, at least at frequencies like 3.5 and 7 megahertz. And down here in the emitter circuit is the keying part. The 1K resistor means that the oscillator is on at all times. That's needed for receive. And then if you want to go to transmit, then you press the key. And that allows a lot more current to go through the emitter circuit of the transistor. And thus it puts out more output power. The 22 microhenry inductor up there is a RF choke that's pre-round. You'll notice there's a 220 picofarad from the collector to the ground that was necessary to ensure the oscillator operated reliably. The output goes via a 1 nanofarad capacitor. Now, the important thing here is a low pass filter. I've already built one. It's an external one that plugs in, so I didn't have a low pass filter included in the transceiver, but if this is the only rig you're going to build or you just want something convenient then I suggest you do. It's a Pi network, in fact there's two or three sections of it and that cuts off the harmonics. You don't want them to be radiating spurious signals. Now you'll also see an extra lead if you follow that that goes from the transmitter to the receiver portion. As for the receiver portion it's right there it's exactly the same circuit as I described in the video a few days ago describing the reflex receiver. So watch that video for more information. It's just a single transistor that operates both as an RF and an audio amplifier. The signal's fed back in order to do that. And there's also a germanium diode. I've got it as OA95, but it could be a 1N60, and that provides the mixing function, where you've got the signal coming from the transmitter, which is a low-level signal at 7 megahertz, mixing with the incoming signal, and the difference in frequency, and there is a small difference, is in audio, which is then amplified 
via the transistor and fed to your headphones. These preferably need to be high impedance. A crystal earpiece will work, even a piezo transducer. If you use lower impedance headphones like 32 ohm, like you get with pocket stereos, they will also work, but the audio level might be a little bit less. Another option is you can plug in an amplified computer or external speaker that will provide a bit more amplification. And I haven't spoken about what happens to the signal that comes in. Well, you've got a switch there that goes from transmit to receive. When it's on receive, then you've got the signal coming in through a three turn primary winding over a 4.7 microhenry RF choke that resonates with 100 picofarads, so that's a selective tuned circuit at 7 megahertz, and then that goes into the transistor, in this case operating as an RF amplifier. Then there's the diode mixer I mentioned before. It goes back around into the circuit, this time as audio, amplified again, and then to the headphones or earphone. So that's pretty much how the Poxy transceiver works. Just two active devices. You won't work DX on it. If you're calling CQ, it's going to take a lot longer to get a response than if you're running higher power or were frequency agile or had a better receiver. That's because even if someone is, say, five or more kilohertz away, you'll still hear them in this receiver as there's no audio filtering. It's very unselective. But unlike some really simple transceivers, it does have two tuned circuits at seven megahertz and that can help remove breakthrough from AM broadcast stations if there's any strong stations near you. Something I should mention in the receiver though is the coupling capacitor to the receiver mixer. I've got it as 100 picofarad. I had 10 picofarad before but the injection level was insufficient and when I put it up to 100 that increased the volume in the earphone. The value that you use depends on the drive coming from whatever oscillator you're using. So if it's a higher drive level then you can go for a lower value like 10 picofarad. If there are issues with breakthrough from broadcast stations, then you can try changing values of things. Maybe coupling capacitors need to be a smaller value. Maybe you want to try putting a trimmer capacitor in the tuned circuit so you get a more precise adjustment to spot on rather than near enough. If you had, say, a 30 picofarad trimmer, then you could put that in and replace the 100 picofarad that you see here with 82 picofarad so you have a bit of a range. Another thing you could do if you wanted to loosen coupling you could go down to two turns on the primary instead of three or if you wanted to tighten it then go to four turns. There will still be cases if you're right near AM broadcast stations that all these suggestions won't work and you should go for a stronger mixer. This is a particularly weak mixer, being a single diode. If you want a stronger mixer, then you'll need a double balance mixer comprising four diodes and various inductors, transformers, and that will also require a greater drive level from your local oscillator. That may require adding one or two transistors as a buffer amplifier. So yep, yeah, a lot of compromises to make this thing simple, yet if everything's going your way, you can still make contacts with something like this. If you connect the antenna, you can hear the receiver is sensitive enough to hear band noise.
and there's a signal just there, VK2ARZ. As is often the way with crystal controlled, not on my frequency, so even if I transmit it, he wouldn't hear me. Inside, this is the BD139 transmitter, and the black transistor there is the BC548 for the receiver. If you don't have a BC548, you could use a 2N3904. Pretty simple, so no need for any printed circuit board. And it's fairly rigid and robust. Here I'm listening on the VK5ARG Web SDR. It's the middle of the day, 12 noon, band conditions aren't very good, and this receiver would be maybe 600 kilometers from here. If you like this style of operating and want to do it yourself, then check out my three books on the topic. Minimum QRP, all about low power amateur radio equipment and operating. And two antenna books, hand carried QRP antennas, portable antennas that can fit onto poles like this, and more hand carried QRP antennas. Thousands have been sold and there's been great reviews. For more information, check out my website, vk3ye.com, or search the titles on Amazon. Thank mm -hmm. you.